Hello. So in this chapter, we're going to be talking about differential equations, which is an enormous topic. Um, if you go to college and study engineering or become an applied math major, you could seriously take two or three or four or five or six cl different classes all about differential equations. They're really important in terms of engineering and physics applications. We will see just a little bit about differential equations in this class. So a differential equation by definition is an equation involving a derivative. So sometimes they're really simple. So here, this is an example of a differential equation. And I'm telling you that the derivative of y is 3x squared. So in this version, I'm basically just saying, oh, y is some function, and I'm telling you what its derivative is. But another example could be something like y equals 3y squared. And this is very different. This top one is basically saying what y prime is, which function is the derivative. While this one is describing how y prime is related to the original function y. It's not telling you which specific function y prime is. It's just saying, oh, I'm thinking of some function where it turns out taking the derivative of the function and taking function squared times 3 give me the same result. But I'm not actually telling you which function is the derivative or which function is y. I'm expressing a relationship. And lots and lots of mathematical and scientific principles are explained using differential equations. There are certain things where we actually understand the principle in terms of a derivative and would work backwards to figure out the value. So let me just give you some examples so that you can get a sense of why people care about differential equations. We could have proportional growth. So suppose we have a population and it grows at an instantaneous annual rate of 3% per year. So every year the population gets bigger by 3%. Technically that's not right. We mean this as an instantaneous rate. 3% is not a specific number. 3% means 3% of its size. So what's going on here is we're saying that the rate at which the population is changing is 3% of how big the population is, right? The idea is if the population is 100,000, then it's growing at a rate of 3,000 people per year. If the population is 150,000, then it's growing at the rate of 4,500 people per year. The rate of growth is a certain percentage of the overall size. In this case, it's 3%. So this differential equation describes the way this population grows without actually telling us what the function is. This is not giving me a formula to plug into. It's just describing a phenomenon about the way in which the rate of change is related to the size of the population. Another example, and you may have seen this in pre-calc, is Newton's law of cooling. So suppose a hot cup of coffee is left in a 70 degree room. It turns out that the way that coffee will, would cool, if I made a graph here. So if I made a graph, so maybe originally the temperature of the coffee is really hot. Maybe it's 200 degrees at the very beginning. And the room is 70 degrees. So. Here's what happens. It does, it's not the physical reality that the temperature of the coffee just goes straight down to 70 and then plateaus. That's not how it works. What happens is that originally the temperature changes very quickly, but then the longer we wait, the slower the change is, and it becomes asymptotic. So originally, it loses heat very quickly. Later on, when it's almost room temperature, it changes very slowly. 
and it turns out that rate of change is proportional. So one version of how that might go, and this would vary from case to case, is that the rate at which the, the coffee's temperature is changing is some percentage, but here it's negative because it's going down, of the temperature dis difference. When the difference between the coffee and the room is very big, it changes quickly. When the difference between the coffee and the room is very small, it changes slowly. Again, I'm not telling you which function describes the coffee. I'm telling you how the rate of change is related to that function. Yet another example is harmonic motion. Harmonic motion describes how, for example, uh, a pendulum might swing back and forth or how a spring might bounce up and down. So in harmonic motion, an object, left out my apostrophe here, acceleration is proportional to but opposite from its position. So acceleration is the second derivative of position. So we're saying the second derivative of the position function is some negative multiple of the position itself. I'm not telling you what the position function is. I'm simply explaining how a derivative is related to something. All of these are examples of expressing some phenomenon by writing a fact about a derivative. I might not be giving you an explicit formula for what that derivative is, but I'm telling you something meaningful. Now, we will start thinking about what's called the solution to a differential equation. And this is a different sense of the word solution than, than you're used to. Right? If I give you an equation like 3x squared plus 1 equals 10, the solution for this would be a value or values. So for, what, for most equations, if I say solve this equation, I'm asking what is x? When I give you a differential equation, the solution is a function. I'm giving you an equation and asking what function makes this true all the time. So what do I say here? If there is a function that makes the differential equation true, that's called a solution. And there are probably lots of them. So a general solution is a function co containing one or more parameters to describe a class. So it's kind of like an indefinite integral. Maybe it has like a plus c. We're saying, oh, there are a bunch of possibilities, but here's a general description of all of them. While a particular solution would be one specific function that meets some requirements. So let's look at an example here. I am say, I, so I say, show that y equals c times e to the negative x plus x minus 1 is a general solution to this differential equation. So let's notice, I'm not asking you to solve this from scratch. Let's just do an analogy here. So as an analogy, if I give you the equation um, 4x to the 8th minus x to the 5th plus 3x cubed plus 17x plus 12 equals um, 35. If I said solve that, that's hard. But if I say show that x equals 1 is a solution to that equation, that's easy. I'm not saying from scratch figure out what the answers are. I'm saying just demonstrate that x equals 1 makes this true. And you could plug in and say, oh yeah, 4 minus 1 plus 3 plus 17 plus 12 really is 35. That's what's going on here. Read the words carefully. I'm not telling you to solve it from scratch. 
I'm telling you what a solution is, and I'm just asking you to show that. So here's the idea. To be a general solution means you make the differential equation true all the time. So here's how I could go about that. If y is equal to c, e to the negative x plus x minus 1, and c here is some general constant, here's what I'll do. I will determine what function is y prime. And then I'll look at the other side, and I'll say x minus y is which function. Right? I'm thinking of these as functions, not numbers. And I will observe, are they the same function? A differential equation is talking about how functions are the same. Is the function I get on the left the same as the function I get on the right? So if I did this, so y prime, c is a coefficient, derivative of e to the negative x would be e to the negative x times negative 1 from the chain rule, plus derivative of x is 1, derivative of a constant is 0. So if I clean that up, that's negative c e to the negative x plus 1. That is what y prime is. How about x minus y? x minus y is x minus, well, here I'm telling you what I want y to be, c e to the negative x plus x minus 1. So that's x minus c e to the negative x minus x plus 1. The x's cancel, and I get negative c e to the negative x plus 1. And we observe that these are the same. So we observe that, yes, it really is true that y prime and x minus y are the same function. If I gave you this differential equation and asked you to solve it from scratch, that is very hard and beyond the scope of this class. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm already telling you what the answer is, and I'm just asking, do you understand what it means to be a solution, and can you demonstrate that this works? Just demonstrate that what I get on the left and what I get on the right are the same thing. Now, what if I say find the particular solution satisfying y of 0 equals 5? So the general solution is y equals c e to the negative x plus x minus 1. Any function of this form makes this differential equation true. But only one equation also makes this, what's called an initial condition, true. So here I'm saying, OK, uh, we know this general category of functions. There's this whole family of functions that make the differential equation true. But now can you tell me of those, which one also makes this particular fact true? So we could say, all right, well, y of 0, on the one hand, if I follow this formula, that's c times e to the negative 0 plus 0 minus 1. On the other hand, I'm saying y of 0 is supposed to be equal to 5. So what does that say? It says c times 1 minus 1 is equal to 5, right? e to the 0 is 1. So this is basically saying c equals 6. So my particular solution gets rid of this general c and chooses one specific value to give me one specific or one particular equation. This is the only function in the universe that simultaneously makes the differential equation true and it makes the initial condition true. So this satisfies 
both the differential equation that y prime is equal to x minus y and this specific fact that y of 0 equals 5. Okay, let's look at another example. And this is inspired by something that I have seen on AP Free Response. There may be a problem where they're just asking you to engage with a differential equation to make sure you really understand what everything means. Even if we don't have a specific formula for a function, a differential equation gives us useful information about a function. So let's look at this. This is a differential equation. Now, based upon this, I do not know which function y is. But we're saying we're thinking of some y that makes this true. So part A, my notability is not sliding well. Part A says find an expression for the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, in terms of x and y. So we can take derivatives, right? How do I get the second derivative? Well, I start with the first derivative and I take a derivative. I will differentiate. So here's my second derivative. Now, this requires product rule. And this is like implicit differentiation. Remember, by default, x is the variable and y is a function of x. So if I use product rule here, it would be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second but the derivative of y is called dy over dx and then minus the derivative of 2 which is 0. So I don't know which function y is I just know y is a function so its derivative is called dy over dx now let's read what this says. Find an expression for that second derivative in terms of x and y. Right now this is in terms of x, y, and the derivative. But hey, let's use this fact again. So it's a useful fact, let's use it. So this is the same, one times y is y. dy over dx is x, y minus two. So here we go. This is an expression that explains now how the second derivative is related to other things. And you could distribute if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. Now part B. It says, suppose that y equals g of x is a solution to the, to the differential equation, so meaning this differential equation, and g of 2 is equal to 1. So let's make sure we understand this. What this is saying is g is a function that makes dy over dx equals xy minus 2 true. Another way of looking at that is to say it makes g prime of x equals x times g of x minus 2 true. We're just introducing a name. y is sort of a general thing, but I'm saying, hey, y, this function g makes that differential equation true. So we're asked to evaluate what's g prime of 2. So following what I have over here, g prime of 2 would be 2 times g of 2 minus 2. This is always true. Right? When I say true, I don't mean true for some x. I mean literally the function on the left and the function on the right are the same function. So no matter what x is, these give me the same thing. So I'm just plugging in 2. g prime of 2 
is 2 times g of 2 minus 2. And conveniently, I've told you that g of 2 is equal to 1. So we can say this is 2 times 1 minus 2, which is equal to 0. How about g double prime of 2? Well, now the trick here is we're going to use our information from before. If g makes this thing true, then also it makes this other one true because we got this fact about the second derivative from the first derivative. So we could interpret this as saying, oh, g double prime of x, that's the second derivative, is g of x, that's y, plus x times x g of x minus 2 in parentheses like that. So g double prime of 2, let's just plug in 2. So I'm sorry this is getting squeezed in a little bit, but g double prime of 2, I'm just going to take this equation and insert x equals 2 g of 2 plus 2 times 2 times g of 2 minus 2. So that's 1 plus 2 times 2 times 1 minus 2. That all works out to 1. So my writing there is a little tiny, but hopefully you can follow through. Now let's look at part C. Use your information of, from part B to describe the graph of y equals g of x at the point 2, 1. Right? We know g of 2 is equal to 1. So, again, we have never been given a formula for g, but we have information about g. So here's the point 2, comma 1. That's a point on the graph of g. I'll do this in a different color. What else do we know? We know g prime of 2 is equal to 0. So that means at that point, there is a horizontal tangent. And that's because g prime of 2 is equal to 0. We also know g double prime of 2 is 1, which says something about concavity. This is a positive number. So what that says is at x equals 2, the graph of g is concave up. So we don't know exactly what it looks like, but the graph is concave up and the tangent line is horizontal. So what we actually know is that we must have a local minimum. So G has a local minimum at x equals 2. We're using the second derivative test, if you remember that. If the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is positive, we're looking at a local minimum. Uh, this phrasing here is open-ended. When a problem like this appeared on the AP, I think they said something like, um, is the point at x equals 2, does g have a local minimum, local maximum, or neither? Justify your answer. So they kind of pointed you in terms of the conclusion they wanted you to draw. This is not an easy problem, but what I'm trying to demonstrate is that Differential equations give useful information. We were able to identify all kinds of information about what's going on without ever knowing the specific formula for what y or g happened to be. We're just given information that roughly describes some aspects of g, and that's enough to do the problem. All right, I'm going to stop this video.